My dear friends, welcome to our Bible study of St. Mark's Gospel. And today we're looking at part of chapter 15. And straightway in the morning the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. Jesus had been arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and he had been brought before the Jewish council and they had no doubt amongst themselves that Jesus was worthy of one thing and that was death. Yet in the very counsel of God, the very plan of God, one had to die for sin. And Jesus, the Son of God, even had the counsel decided he was not guilty. Jesus would still have had to die on that cross at Calvary. Yes, we can be critical of these men for their decision. But no, no, God himself had designed it that way. That the very religious ones would be the ones who decided that Jesus was guilty and had to die. But yet, having made that decision, the men of the council had not the authority to actually take Jesus and crucify him. Because it was an occupied country. It was under the authority of Rome. Jerusalem had Pilate as its governor and it was to Pilate that Jesus had to be taken and when we think about it there God himself God the Son he was bound and he was taken to the place where Pilate was what humiliation for him but yet he accepted this he had come to die. The one who had not death within his nature accepted death. And when he got to Pilate, Pilate asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? He came out straight away to, to Jesus. Evidently, Pilate had heard that it was said that Jesus was a king of the Jews. And he answering said unto him, Thou sayest it. Jesus did not boast that, Oh, I, I'm a king. I'm the king of the Jews. No. He said, Thou sayest it. And the chief priest accused him of many things, and he answered nothing. Pilate would have been used to ones being brought before him who would have done anything, said anything to try and get themselves found not guilty before Pilate and released. But Jesus was not defending himself. And the chief priests, yes, they accused him. No doubt said, dreadful things about him. But Jesus did not in any way, shape or form look to defend himself. And Pilate asked him again, saying, Answerest thou nothing? He couldn't understand this, Pilate. No, he couldn't come to grips with it. He was a man. Not and not the type that Pilate would normally have had. He was so different with Jesus. 
But Jesus yet answered nothing, so the pilot marvelled. Look at it, this governor, he marvelled at the silence, as it were, from Jesus. Now at that feast he released unto them one prisoner, whomsoever they desired. So that was the custom of the day. Who knows how many years that had been the custom. And there was Pilate knowing that at that particular time he would have the authority to release some prisoner. And there was one named Barabbas which lay bound with, with them that had made insurrection with him who had committed murder in the insurrection. Here was a murderer who was imprisoned, rightly imprisoned, for what he had done. He would received the deserts of his crime. And the multitude, they were crying, crying aloud for Pilate to do that which he had done before and release some prisoner. And Pilate said unto the people, Will ye that I release unto you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had delivered him for envy. Although not a religious man in any shape or form, Pilate, he could see what was in the hearts of these religious ones, these of the council. And he knew that it was because of what Jesus taught and what Jesus did that they were jealous because they could not do that. But the chief priests, oh, they were moved all right. They moved the people. They were determined that Jesus had to die. That he should release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said again unto them, what will ye then that I shall do unto him, whom ye call the king of the Jews? Pilate wasn't calling Jesus the king of the Jews. It was the people. But the religious ones could not accept this. Even though Jesus had proved that he was the expected Messiah. He'd raised Lazarus from the dead. And that was the proof. And what did they cry? They cried, crucify him. Here was the spotless Lamb of God. And they cried, crucify him. And Pilate said, Why? What evil have he done? And yet they cried exceedingly, Crucify him. Pilate knew the man was not guilty. He knew Jesus was not guilty. But yet, he knew that he had to pacify the crowd. He didn't want rebellion, insurrection to take place and the quiet way of dealing with this matter was to release Barabbas and let the Jews take Jesus away and crucify him and that's what he did but first of all we have that telling word scourged him. 
Can we think of it? Can we understand it? That here the perfect Son of God, God himself, being scourged. No, no, we can't take it in. What he went through for us, what he went through for every hell-deserving sinner, he went through it. And not a murmur. He accepted all and went through. And the soldiers led him away unto the hole called Praetorium. And they called together the whole band. Yes, all the soldiers came together to see this man. This man who was so different from any other who had been brought before Pilate. And they clothed him with purple. Oh, they were mocking him. Yes, because he'd been called the King of the Jews. They were dressing him just like a king and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head. Those thorns, what pain he must have had, what he went through. Nothing cheap about this, nothing shallow. It cost Jesus everything. And as God he was humiliated before men. and began to salute him, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed. Oh, it must have been an awful sight. Can we remotely picture this? That there was my God and your God providing you know him as God through that life, through the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse away all sin and to bring you into a new life, a transformation of life. And these things cannot but speak deeply to your heart. Have you thanked him enough today have you thanked him from your very heart of what he did for you? That he gave his all for you? Have you given your all for him? Your all to him? Because that's all we can give. Our life to him. Our will to him. Our all to him. With nothing else to give him. Because once he has our life, once he has our will, he has our all. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. Led him out. Yes, that's what Jesus went through at his trial. And next week, next time we will continue and see what happened in that dreadful, dreadful crucifixion. Thank you for being with me. God bless you. Goodbye.